or email bsdradio at gmail.com. Now your host for Bay Nerd Sports Talk, Brandon Phillips. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and thank you for having me. You are listening to Paydirt Sports Talk here on a wonderful Saturday morning in Bowling Green. And as you probably already know, if you read Face Twitter or my book or, or any... No, it's Twitter Face. Twitter Face, MySpace, Facebook, anything that we could put it on. We, we, we prostituted ourselves, didn't we, Doug? And I know you're, you're accustomed to doing things like that. But no, I meant, you know, getting out there and putting the word out. But we do have a special guest. As always, Jason Stam is with us today. You Hotel do. will not be calling from the closet because he is, uh, he's at a wedding today. Uh, more important his, thing. His huh? brother was getting married, well, so he was what not. Be more important than this? Or his brother be married? His brother getting married. That's okay, the only thing. I'll give him that. But we do have a special guest that we talked about. Sergio Carouche is joining us. Serge, we appreciate you being here this morning. You've got the Batman hat. I've seen you wear, I think, a bat belt. <laughs> Big fan of Batman. What's the connection there? Did you grow up a Batman fan? Because I've got pictures of you here in studio where you quite clearly at one time had allegiance to Darkwing Duck. So you see, the whole Batman thing is for next year's Hilltopper Hysteria. Okay. That, that's, that's the whole so you're Batman. saving that, and that yeah. shirt's for Hilltopper Hysteria next year? Oh, yeah. Now, I know you've been soliciting some, um, some ideas for dunks. Last year, you had no issues with highlights from the crowd and getting the dunks. Now, have you decided what you're going to do? Is it a last-minute thing? Do you have some? I want to do something with the shot clock this year. Using the shot clock? Maybe jumping off the shot clock? I don't know. I don't know about that one. Maybe it's like some, you know, Larry Bird, you know, Michael jo- Michael George stuff, like, you know, off the roof, off the yeah. shot clock. Off the back of your neck. Nothing but net. Off the neck. Well, <laughs> we, uh, we, we've gotten a lot of emails that we do want to get to. You can call the show, 782-1945, or toll-free from California and Alaska, and uh, I think Puerto Rico as well, 866-240-0609, the Virgin Islands, maybe Europe. Guam. One of the things I wanted to talk about, Sergio, is a lot of people in this community have gotten to know you over the last year. So some of this might be redundant, but a lot of us don't. So talk a little bit about growing up in Memphis, playing high school ball there, a year in junior college, and then you end up at the Hill. Talk about that process from, from high school ball, deciding to go to the junior college level, and then coming to WKU for your first year this past season. Okay, well, I'm going to be honest. I wasn't good at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was an actor, you know, the type of guy you see on rent singing. Yeah. Um, I was up there, 525,000. <laughs> hey, that's what I did. Now, did you, now you competed in acting, yes, correct? Yes, I did. Now, how did, I, I never, you're the second person that's told me that they were a competitive actor. How do you compete in acting? Um, easy. It's like six people, and the judges, three judges, and they rank you on the score from one to ten, and the top three scores goes to the finals. Okay, and what categories are there? Um, pros, duo, interp, improv. Uh, I was an improv favorite. And what is it? Now, improv is just kind of like freelance. Are you, you given a, a topic? Or? You get three subjects. You get a famous person. Who's on it anyway? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. A famous person. Wayne Brady. Person. Okay. You got this. Yeah. Wasn't that his show? Wayne why, Brady. Why okay. Wayne Brady. Why Wayne Brady? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we used to compete, and then we'll go uh, all across the world, and uh, state would be held in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Gotcha. And we'll go there, and the winner from there will go on the nationals, and it's just like, you know, any basketball yeah. event. Or and you were a state like. champ, right? Yeah, with the state champs. Now, do you get rings? <laughs> do you get like a, a medal? I mean, what do they get for state champions and, and pros and acting? You get like a nice little ribbon. Well, that's trophy. nice. Yeah. That's nice. So so if you back up, so you decided, okay, I, I can't hoop. So what I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pursue an acting career, not unlike Brad Pitt, perhaps. And then at some point, you picked up a basketball. When was that? I had a basketball in my hands since I was eight. I was just bad. You just couldn't do anything with it? <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I had a basketball in my hands since I was eight. You know, the dad wants you to play sports. You're like, come on, son, you got it. Yeah. And you suck. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> See, now, Serge, I was telling B. Phil, I, I was right with you. on. I, I did storytelling. I did. I was on, I was on the speech team in high school. You so look, I know exactly you look what like you a dumb person. <laughs> I was going to say, you, I it's interesting. You you if, like if, if you put these two guys together and you said which one was the drama major. <laughs> I think Serge and I should do a duo, though. We should do a one oh, You could do an improv. Hey, we could do an improv, yeah. Yeah, that Give would be good. Sergio, real quick, we've got a ton of emails, and I want to make sure, because I promised these guys that we would get to them throughout the show, Okay. so I'll interject every once in a while, and then we'll get right back on topic, and I'll try not to make it too ADD. Just throw them at me. I want to go with the one that was the furthest away, because we did them by location, and Taylor from New York sent us an email, and the question was, what are your career plans if you don't go to the NBA, and would you ever consider playing overseas? Mm. My career plans if I don't go to the NBA? 
I don't want to think like that. No, I don't think I'm going. But if I did not be in communication, sure. possibly be hosting the new ESPN 14. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, might, I might take Brandon's job. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm going to just say that. But, um, yes, overseas is a possibility. Yeah, I love to travel and play overseas because it'll give me a chance to you know, see the world and become more culturally diverse. Sure. Yeah, and there's a lot of advantages to doing that. Now, um, speaking, I guess, geography, now the rest of things are from Kentucky, so <laughs> that was a bit dramatic. But we've got Hilltopper Rob, who I believe is a big, big fan of the Haven. Hilltopper Rob is a big Hilltopper Haven guy. He's posted there for a long time, which I know you know uh, a lot about. His question was, and it's kind of a, a – I mean, actually, he's got like three questions, but – he wanted to know at two parter, what are your main goals for improving next year and what does the presence of Cliff Dixon mean to you as a leading rebounder? So let's start on the first. You had your first year on the hill, a very successful year. Great I think at the the banquet you won the award for best, best rebounder. rebounder. Um and so now as you look to next season, and I know you've been working out a lot, five o'clock in the morning with What's the door? In A-Dub. In A-Dub, and you're over there and you're getting after it. So what are the things that you've really focused on for next year, or is it just the all-around game, trying to improve in all areas? Um, about five to seven, A-Dub and Tador basically dribble drills, mm-hmm. working on handles, a shot, one dribble pull-up, my favorite shot in the world, three-pointers, everything, diving on the ground, hustle, weights. I mean, it's just a plethora of stuff. But, I mean, as far as Cliff Dixon goes, that's a great player. You know, Kevin Durant's had a brother, great player. Um, and rebound, I mean, it's going to help us out if he rebounds as much as me. Sure. But I'm going to continue to do what I do. Yeah. How, how much is that going to help, though, having a big guy like that who can, you know, maybe take some, you know, instead of a double team and serves and not get a rebound, to have a guy like Cliff Dixon in there to kind of take some of the oh, that's attention That's going to help because it's two threats. You know, they're going to have to figure out, is it better for them to focus on Cliff or focus on me? You know, yeah. and then we got the rest of the team who's Stefan Pettigrew can, like, throw you like 10 feet in the air <laughs> it's huge muscles on muscles yeah muscles said. on muscles so it's it's just gonna be a crazy year well if we go back and you were talking about you know as a child you always had a basketball in your hands mm-hmm. just maybe you weren't able to do with it the things that you can do now <laughs> acting was your your first love so you get to the high school level and you know at some point your skills started to progress and they must have done it pretty significantly because you had a great high school career at what point did you start to realize you know, I, I can play basketball, and I might be able to play at the college level. Shoot, the point when girls start coming around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest. <laughs> when I had a basketball in my hand, like all the girls were like, hey, Sergio. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, yep, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, Jason, that goes to my philosophy. I've always said, if you notice, and, and you're going to call this a man crush thing, but all of the big-time NFL quarterbacks, for the most part, are really good-looking guys. And the reason I think that is is because when you're when you're a kid, and like Sergio said, the good-looking guys are the ones that the girls look up to. And initially, so then that's what happens. Then the guys think you're cool because the girls think you're cool. And what do you have to have as a quarterback or a basketball player? Confidence. Brandon, no I'm question. still gonna, I'm still going to talk it up to <laughs> man crush. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Sergio. I'm, I'm asking you questions, so it's only fair that you ask me. <laughs> I think Brandon just called me sexy. Like, <laughs> on, like on inadvertently, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, inadvertently. I'm, just, I'm just saying. He's like, if an attractive man, I'm kind of uncomfortable right next yeah. to you. I'm I'll sorry. scoot over. <laughs> scoot no, but I've always said that you, what you'll find is it has a lot to do with confidence. And if you're the guy that gets all the girls in high school, you don't lack for confidence. And I think it translates. So, And I, I just say I think Sergio's echoing that when he says, you know, why did you focus on basketball? Well, because the, the chicks dig it, so to speak. Am yeah. I correct? Now, by the time you guys got your senior year, reflect back. Your last year of high school, Oof. you're looking at, at opportunities, and you decide at that point, I want to – I mean, were you torn between, hey, I want to move on and, and pursue yeah. acting? Because I know collegiately there's a lot of opportunities – that a lot of people don't realize in doing exactly what you're done, but then there's this basketball thing hanging out there. How did you deal with trying to decide which do I want to focus on? Well, you know, college is coming up. Mom wanted me to go to college. I think I'm the second person in my immediate family to go to college. Sure. Um, so I looked at opportunities. I had acting scholarships, but I had full scholarship for basketball. And me and my mom sat down, and we, we just thought, you know, basketball is just a different stage to perform on. Sure. And, I mean, just as y'all know, I'm – I'm crazy, so it was just like, you know, I'm going to take this opportunity, I'm going to try my best and go at it. Yeah.